Hello everybody, Trevor here, and today I'm going to review the 20th anniversary edition of Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Now, I know what you're going to say. Why are you making this video now instead of last fall when this Blu-ray slash DVD release came out? Well, for starters, I was originally not going to do this because I don't know how to screen cap DVD menus on movies and shows. And secondly, I normally don't do reviews like this, but ever since I got comments in my last video regarding the Director's Cut's final release, I really needed to get this off my chest just so I can give my honest thoughts on this DVD slash Blu-ray combo pack. Oh, and before we start, I'm not going to show everything on this release due to copyright issues, and I don't want to risk another copyright claim from Sony. I'll show a little bit of PT Boomer, but not much. Here's the box cover itself. It looks really good. I love the picture of Thomas and Lady together at the bottom with three of the big named actors on the top part. You can even see that the text of the title looks different from the previous release, which I don't mind at all. And inside this box set, you get both DVD and Blu-ray versions of the film. But what makes this combo pack really special was the many bonus features including interviews, a behind-the-scenes reel, and most importantly, the deleted storylines with P.T. Boomer. Let's talk about the interviews first. There is a two-part interview with Beryl Croft explaining her work on the film, and the other interviews feature Alec Baldwin, Mara Wilson, Dee Dee Khan, and Humi Mann. And I gotta say, they are all really well-done interviews. And you can tell that they had plenty of fun when making this movie, including Alec Baldwin himself. The one with Dee Dee Khan is one of my favorites because in that one, she revealed that she has a son with autism. This surprised me in a good way because I have autism too. Well, technically it's Asperger's Syndrome, which is a mild form of autism. And I'm not ashamed to admit that. Another one of my favorite interviews has to be the one with Humi Mann, the composer for the film. In that one, he explained that he never wrote a tune for P.T. Boomer because of the test audience, forcing Bert Alcroft to make the changes to the film. You see, the original director's cut didn't have any music, so he wasn't able to make a score for the cut character in time, which is sad because I would have loved to hear an actual theme for Boomer. Also, there's another reason why P.T. Boomer was cut. And it's not just because the stupid test viewers thought he was too scary for kids, but also there was more screen time for the live action actors than the engine models. So they had to make a bunch of cuts and changes to give the sore engines more screen time. But my most favorite interview of all has to be Eddie Glenn as Thomas which is an archival interview. At first, I didn't know how to activate that feature, but after doing some research, I started to figure it out. To play that bonus feature, you have to scroll down in the extra section until you get to the behind the scenes reel. Then you have to click right until you see a circular outline on Percy's face. And when you press it, it plays the interview with Eddie Glenn's Thomas voice. Oh, and take a shot every time he says, In Thomas and Magic Railroad. Also, no offense to John Bellis, but I still think Eddie Glenn has the best voice for Thomas. I'll talk about the other voice actors later. When it comes to the two-part interview with Beralcroft, I think the most memorable part of it has to be her acknowledgement on the film's hate. And even though she's proud of her work, she completely understands why most people don't like the film. That just goes to show you that she's a really nice woman and a great role model, unlike certain people like Derek Savage. Now, one thing about copyright infringement and fair use, don't believe what you read on the internet. It's, think, you know for a fact that most of the stuff you read was rent probably by some 13 or 14 year old teenager. I had someone email me, well, it's fair use. That's when, that's when somebody's comment was on the YouTube page or, or, or on, the, on the Yahoo page. I'm going, what? And like Brett Allcroft, I'll try my best to respect the opposite opinion when it comes to Thomas and Magic Railroad because 
If we all hate or like this film, then life will be boring and uninteresting. That's why it's good to have different opinions on certain topics. Now, about the original voice actors. One thing I thought could have made this release a lot better was adding in more original voice clips like Keith Scott as Diesel 10 and Michael Andrews as James and Percy. While I still don't like Percy's original voice because it's too similar to Andrews' normal narration voice, but I still think he would make a much better voice for James than Susan Roman because it's much more masculine and more fitting to James's character than the final voice. And besides, I always picture James as a middle-aged character, you know, between young and old. As for Keith Scott, I still think he would have been a perfect voice for Diesel 10 because it reminds me a lot like Tim Curry. However, there are certain moments where it sounded American. It might be just me, but there was probably another temporary voice actor who does the gruff American accent for the character. As an American myself, I prefer Diesel 10's more Tim Curry-esque British accent, and besides, it's supposed to sound frightening! Another thing I thought could have made the release a lot better was adding in storyboard scenes of George the Steamroller and Cranky the Crane. If you don't know, these two characters were originally going to appear in the movie as side characters, but didn't make it past the storyboard stage, probably because they forgot to bring George's model over to Toronto for filming. But you can still see Cranky's leg in one scene in the movie. Personally, if I wanted a fully animated remake of this movie, then I think they should not only include the P.T. Boomer scenes, but also the scenes with George the Steamroller. As well as Cranky the Crane. Speaking of the P.T. Boomer scenes, the deleted storylines. This is the real icing on the cake of the DVD slash Blu-ray release because this is pretty much every single Thomas and Magic Railroad fan's dream to see come true. And trust me, I'm one of them too, because I was one of the many people who signed the petition long before it was finally released in 2020. When I first watched the whole deleted storyline section, I was very excited to see P.T. Boomer in action. And to be quite honest, he's not as scary as I thought he would be. In fact, He's actually quite funny in a way. One of my favorite scenes was where he was digging with a mini excavator while laughing cartoonishly evil. Believe me, I chuckled a little bit when I first saw this scene. I mean, look at him! You can tell Doug Lettuce was having fun with this role. And as I stated before in the last Thomas Magic Railroad video, I still think P.T. Boomer should have been kept in the final cut because there are some scenes that didn't make that much sense without him, including the climatic chase sequence. Also, the boomer scenes give the other live-action characters more character development, including Patch, Billy Two Feathers, and Stacy Jones. Speaking of the chase scene, the one that was featured on these two discs was actually the unfinished work print version, which is fine. But I prefer the one with the Toy Story 2 slash Stuart Little music because it looks finished compared to the one that's already been released to the public. Oh, and if you truly think that P.T. Boomer is too scary for the kids, then contact your local psychiatrist. Now it's time for my overall thoughts on the 20th anniversary edition of the first Thomas movie. Do I recommend this? Oh, absolutely. If you're a loyal fan of this movie, as well as the American spin-off Shining Time Station, then I totally recommend that you buy this off of Amazon, or the official Shaw Factory website if it's still up there. And despite the film's major flaws, I still love it from the bottom of my heart, whether it be the final cut version or the slightly better director's cut. And maybe someday, they can release this box set again but with even more bonus features like the original voice clips of the characters, as well as the storyboard scenes with George and Cranky. Overall, I give this Blu-ray combo pack an A-. It's definitely worth your time and money. I understand why a lot of people don't like it, but for me, I can't help but love it because it's a Thomas movie and I have a lot of respect for it whether for the greater good or not. And besides, I've seen worse. 
And yes, I still consider it to be canon in the Thomas universe because Diesel 10 and Lady returned in Calling All Engines, and that some of the movie's locations did appear in the 2014 Sodor map. Now tell me in the comments section on what are your thoughts on Thomas Magic Railroad. Do you like it like I do? Do you still hate it? Or do you think it's a mixed bag? And don't worry, you're always welcome to disagree with me because we all have freedom of speech. This is Trevor Davis, signing off.